G'day, I'm Paul. God, there are so many boring SUVs out there, but Nissan reckons it has the antidote. This is the all new Nissan Juke. Now I reckon it could be a sign of the times for Nissan. It might be turning the corner for the brand. It's actually not a bad looking car. This is the top specification Juke Ti. It's priced from just over $36,000. And you can see the rest of the Nissan Juke price range in the description section below. It competes with cars like the Mazda CX-30, the Hyundai Kona, the Toyota CHR. They're those small SUVs built on smaller cars in essence. Now, if you do want to skip ahead, you can use the time codes on the screen up there. Or if you're on YouTube, just use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already hit the subscribe button and also press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive something new. Let's talk styling. So you can get the Duke in eight different colors. This is pretty full on, isn't it? If you remember the last Duke, that was a little too full on and didn't really look that good. This on the other hand, I reckon it looks cool. Have a look at this grill. It's a nice, big, gaping open grill. You have these chrome bits on the side, and it's only a small engine. We'll go into a bit more detail with this later, but it's a three-cylinder engine, so it does require cooling, but you can see they've blocked off some of this to not let down the aerodynamics too much. Then they break up the body colors with this piano black material on the front, but you can already see that that's got scratch marks in it, which is something I always complain about with piano black inside a car. Now, in terms of the lighting system, you have daytime LED running lights, and then the full LED headlights are built into this cluster here. Then you get that really cool triangular sort of, I don't know, what show is that from? You know, when they throw the, I don't know, Ninja Turtles or something, <laughs> it looks like that. So it has a really cool design up the front here. And I think this is going to stand out in traffic and it no longer has a cheesy look. It looks quite nice and aggressive. By the way, LED fog lights as well. And then around the side here, the top spec TI gets 19 inch alloy wheels, 225 mil wide rubber on 45 profile. So they're a pretty big wheel. I suspect it's going to ruin the ride, but we will see soon whether that's the case. And then around the wheel arches here, you have this plastic cladding. Again, this is a front wheel drive car. You're not gonna be doing any off-roading in it, but it kind of gives you the impression that it can go somewhere if it needs to. I like the wheel design too, with this reflective section offset against the black. Kind of looks like they've just cut straight through a black wheel and it reveals this, which is great. Sorry about the noise here, by the way. We're literally underneath a freeway. Let me show you the rest of the car. So you get these black mirrors on the entire range. Shark fin antenna for the top spec, plus the privacy glass. And have a look at this. The door handle is built into that section just up the top there. So it kind of makes it look like a coupe because you don't have a traditional door handle in here. But there is something strange here. Have a look at the fit on this. It kind of sticks out. I don't think it's meant to be like that, but pretty disappointing for a brand new car. Come around to the back here. You've got this inbuilt spoiler along the back and then LED tail lights across the back of the car. It really is quite smart looking. They haven't just designed the front end. Everything about the car looks nice and muscular and bold. Now, what about the dimensions compared to the previous generation? It's 30 millimeters taller, 75 millimeters longer, 35 millimeters wider, and sits on a wheelbase that's 106 millimeters longer. And it has an overall weight of just 1,250 kilos. So it is a seriously light car. So in continuing with the theme of the outside of the Duke, the inside is very different to the last one, but in a good way. Have a look at all this Alcantara on this top spec model. It's on the dashboard there. It's sitting here inside the doors on the armrest, and it's built into the seats and the seats look pretty cool as well. Have a look at this as well. I'm gonna run you through that shortly. Speakers built into the headrests. Some interesting technology there, but for the main part, it looks really cool. Then they've gone to a bit of effort here with the air vents. So they move around in their slot there, but you can turn them to open and close them. Here how they click as you turn. So yeah, it really does feel quite premium in here and it certainly feels a big step up from something like a CX-3 or a Hyundai Kona. But how quality is it? So we've got our hardness tester here. It measures from zero to 100. This is a bit of a joke tool, but a lot of motoring journalists go on about how hard soft touch surfaces are. So let's give it a test on the dashboard there. Zero soft, 100 is hard. Do it on the Alcantara. Wow, that's nice and plush reading under 50. We'll try it on this surface as well. Same story, pretty impressive result there. So yes, the Alcantara is soft for our soft touch material test. And build quality, yeah, it feels really good. Nothing's out of place here. This car's built in the UK, but it all feels nice and solid. 
Let's talk infotainment. If you've seen some of our other Nissan reviews, you'll know that infotainment systems aren't really Nissan's strong suit, but that has all changed. Nissan has just rolled out a brand new infotainment system. This here is an eight inch infotainment system. And today I'm gonna to take you through a detailed review of it, plus all the features that it comes with. So let's get stuck into it. This is what the home screen looks like. And you can see that you have customizable menus. You can change what appears in each menu and then they slide across with this being your default home screen with shortcuts for entry for navigation, radio and then call history as well. Let's dive through each menu. We'll start off here with the phone. You can quick dial with favorites, run through a phone book, go through the call history. So recently dialed numbers, dial a number yourself, check text messages, adjust Bluetooth connections, and then also do volume controls. The entire system can be controlled using voice recognition. One push of this button allows you to enter navigation addresses and also make phone calls as well. Over in the info menu, there's some extra details there for the navigation system. So for example, traffic information, this is built into the inbuilt TomTom navigation that I'll show you in a second, but this is able to show you nearby traffic information and details. So here you can see all the traffic problems around us, and there's quite a few. And then the other great feature here is where am I? If you're ever involved in a car accident or the first at the scene of a car accident, you need to tell people where you are. You can see exact GPS coordinates down the bottom and then your nearest cross streets as well. Very useful feature and hopefully you never have to use it, but it is there in case you ever do. Over on the audio menu, you'll find FM, AM, DAB plus digital radio plus Bluetooth streaming as well. And also the ability to connect with a traditional auxiliary port or via USB. If you click on the map menu, that takes you to the inbuilt satellite navigation. This uses a TomTom -tom system that's built into the car. Works pretty well, it can be a little bit laggy at times as you zoom in and out, but for the most part, it's a really quick system and far better than the old navigation system that used to be integrated here in Nissan's. Let's try to put in a destination, we'll see how quick it is. Melbourne Airport is my go-to. Let's type that in. You can already see the results starting to appear down the bottom there. Melbourne Airport. I'm having to type the whole thing out, do a list. There we go, Melbourne Airport. So yeah, pretty straightforward, it works really well. In terms of smartphone connectivity, you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto built into the screen. Both of those are via a cable, so not a wireless system. You have to plug in manually to do that. It uses up the entire screen as well, so it's a good use of that screen real estate. Then the final one is the settings menu. So you can see here, Bluetooth settings, phone settings, settings for customizing the audio menu, the home screen. This is all sort of where it's located. Down the bottom, you have some features for a day-night switch. So if that's ever too bright, you hit that button, it'll dim it. Also a shortcut button for the camera. So that brings up that 360 degree camera and then shows you the area around the car. And then shortcut menus for the map, the menu and audio as well. Okay, let's talk about the rest of the features that come standard in the Duke in this top spec model. So you have automatic climate control down the bottom here, but it's only single zone, which is a little bit disappointing. It would have been nice to see dual zone. Heated seats ahead of the driver is a seven inch TFT display. It shows you information like your trip computer, which doors are open and then all the safety systems as well. Talking about safety systems, autonomous emergency braking comes with pedestrian and cyclist detection. You have radar cruise control, lane departure assistant, blind spot monitoring. You have a 360 degree camera, but it's not a very good camera. I just don't get why they don't have higher quality cameras in here. It's just really hard to make things out here. And then in the past with Nissan cars at nighttime, these have been virtually redundant because you can't see anything. But a second push of the camera brings up a door camera that helps you see cyclists and making sure you don't scratch those wheels against the curb. They come with front and rear parking sensors as well to make parking this little car much easier. Let's have a look at the keys is what it looks like. Lock, unlock, and then a redundant button that does nothing. Nissan logo on top, nice little compact key as well with nothing on the back there. And it's a proximity sensing key too, so you just leave that in your pocket, approach the door, grab the door handle, push the button, and it's also a push button start, so you don't need to take that out of your pocket. There is one more feature I wanna show you before we wrap up this section, and it's this. It may look like a bit of a gimmick having a speaker built into the headrest, but there is logic to it. So this is called Bose Personal Plus. Now we have a full review of this technology on our website. You can click up here to read that. Where Bose is going with it in the future, they want you to be able to listen to a phone call, for example, while you're a driver, and then for your passengers to not hear it. So that's where the technology is going, but this is the start of it. And it's designed to increase the sound space or narrow it down for the driver and the front passenger. So if I pop some music on, I can hear the music as it is now. But if I go into the sound menu, I can enable this and then change whether it's a wide or narrow field. So right now it's wide and it feels like there's noise coming from all around the cabin. But if I narrow it down to its most narrow setting, 
sounds like it's coming directly into my ears. It's quite a weird phenomenon. It's hard to explain without actually experiencing it yourself. So there's eight speakers and the whole idea behind this is you don't then need an additional subwoofer because you're getting all of that noise pumped right into your ears. Okay, what about practicality and comfort? We'll start off with storage. Phone, where is it gonna live? Well, fits perfectly there. Kind of fits at a squeeze down the front. No wireless phone charging, unfortunately. What about storage for drink bottles? Perfect fit, perfect fit. And then in the doors you have room for a full bottle plus odds and ends, and then storage down here. It's okay, it's not the world's biggest center console. What about the glove box? Glove box is pretty generous, so plenty of room there, even when you have the manual inside as well. And then comfort. Yeah, love these seats. They look seriously cool, and they are properly comfortable. So they're nice and huggy. Huggy, let me just hug around you. Steering wheel sits nicely in the hand too, with a flat bottom on it, and then paddle shifters behind it. Let's talk back seat. So extra wheelbase in this generation of Duke means you're afforded a little bit more room back here. Yes, it is good on paper, but if you do have your seat in a regular driving position, a bit like me, I do have it quite far back. So some people may have it a little further forward, but you'll see here that I don't have a great deal of knee room, but I do have sufficient toe room and headroom is pretty reasonable. So you're gonna be able to fit an adult here for maybe a shorter journey, even a longer one if you want, because you can spread out a little bit, but it is still a little bit cramped. So map pockets in the back of the seats. You have a USB port here for charging devices, plus a little phone tray down there while your device is charging. No center armrest, but you do get ISOFIX points. And then have a look at these seats. They look really sweet. That sort of ribbed effect uh, on the front seat is translated back here with the Alcantara bits built in. And then these seats have top tether points on each of the seats and grab handles as well. And where are you gonna put your bottle while you're drinking if there's no center armrest? Well, there is a slot in the door there, plus room on the other side as well to put other bits and pieces. One of the big advantages of a bigger Duke is more cargo space. So there's 422 liters of cargo space available here. Then on top of that, under the cargo floor, you have a space saver spare tire. It's really good space because it's nice and deep so when you put things in they're not going to move around too much and it just feels a little more spacious than a Kona or a CX-3 so they've really gone to a lot of effort here to make this functional so let's get rid of this I'll show you how this works so undo these little clip things up the top that then slides out there's nowhere to put this so that's just going to have to sit at home or just there on the floor then the space expands to a little over 1300 litres when you drop the second row that sort of expands it nicely there I'll show you how it goes with our bags they fit in nicely there and then off to the side you have a little light and then hooks as well so we've hit the road in the Duke and we're doing this test a little differently. We're in and around the city. So we want to see what this car is going to be like where people are buying it. Under the bonnet is a one litre turbocharged three cylinder petrol engine. Now that may sound familiar. It's a similar engine size and configuration to the Ford Fiesta ST. You can see our review of that by clicking up there. That means it's got a raspy note to it and it has a little gruff idle as well because inherently three cylinder engines are just a little off balance. So that means when you do get stuck into it, you can hear it start making a really cool noise. It produces 84 kilowatts of power and 180 newton meters of torque. Now, if you remember back to when I said the weight, the weight is only 1250 kilos. And that means that 84 kilowatts is a fair bit of power for a car that weighs barely anything. Here's another fun fact for you as well. This engine is part of the Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi Alliance, and it's in the same family as the 1.3 litre engine. So they share a lot of similarities. Now, the curious thing is that that 1.3 litre engine is used in a bunch of Renault products, but also in the Mercedes-Benz A-Class. So you technically kind of have a Mercedes-Benz esque engine under the bonnet here. Connecting the drivetrain to the wheels is a seven speed dual clutch transmission. I don't know how many times I need to go over this, but a dual clutch transmission in a sports car makes perfect sense because you're trying to extract as much as you can out of it. Here though, they've put it in for fuel efficiency. So the combined fuel economy is 5.8 litres per 100 kilometres. But the problem is that it's not really a refined gearbox. So at low speeds, it tends to shunt you around a little bit. It's not overly quick, so we're traveling along here, I'll punch it. You kind of have to wait for it to kick down. So you're not really getting any of the benefits of a dual clutch transmission, but you are getting that weird, unsure feeling at low speeds and it's really quite off-putting. Okay, so this is what I mean about the gearbox. We're cruising along slowly here. If I lean on the throttle, it kind of jerks you forward. It's a little inconsistent. 
going from forward into reverse. I'm going to pop this into reverse. It's sort of laggy and, and it waits to do things. Yeah, not really a huge fan of it. Unlike a lot of other SUVs or mini SUVs in this segment, the Duke actually has a pretty commendable 172 millimeter ground clearance. So you're not gonna be doing any rock hopping or off-roading because it is only front wheel drive. But 172 millimeters means you can probably do a bit of light off-roading to a campsite somewhere. Keep in mind as well that this platform is capable of all wheel drive. So in the future, we may see an all wheel drive version of the Duke. Let's talk drive modes. So you have three to choose from. You have eco, normal, and sport. Eco just dulls everything down. Normal is for regular driving, but sport is what I'm interested in. When you press the throttle, it just sharpens everything up. So you're getting a whole lot more noise, the throttle responds much quicker, and the steering feels like you're actually doing something, which is pretty cool. And I think the sport mode is the best character for this engine. It really just makes it feel vibrant and alive. Okay, so we're now getting into the depths of the city here. What is the ride like? We're on 19 inch alloy wheels. And it is surprisingly good. We often complain with cars like the X-Trail about it being too firm, same with the Qashqai. Here though, it feels really nice. So the 19 inch wheels aren't crashing. We're going over tram tracks and bumps, speed humps, and it's really just soaking it up nicely. So well done Nissan, you've actually created a nice riding SUV. Let's talk visibility. So at the front, it's really good. At the back, it's quite a narrow window. So you're not really seeing a great deal. And if you've got anyone in that middle seat, you'll have no visibility at all. But out the sides, it's pretty reasonable with decent sized wing mirrors. And that carries over to parking. It means that with the 360 camera, while it isn't the best quality in the world, it's gonna make parking a little easier. The steering's nice and light too. So you don't really feel like you're driving a sporty car or a super comfortable car. It sits right in the middle there. So you're getting enough feedback, but it isn't too heavy or too light. So Nissan Duke, I reckon they have absolutely nailed the styling. It looks really smart, but aggressive at the same time. And it looks completely different to anything else in this segment, which I think is gonna lead a lot of people into buying this car. It's reasonably priced, it's loaded with features. And in this top spec model, it just comes with everything and i love all the alcantara bits the bose headphones but it is let down by that gearbox i don't know i'm just really not a fan of it so make sure you have a drive of it first this is going to be acceptable for most people but if you are finicky like me and you prefer a torque converter instead of a dual clutch it is probably worth just making sure it's going to suit your lifestyle but outside of that it gets our big tick of approval now if you did enjoy this video i'd love it if you could hit the like button and also subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive something different but until next time take it easy